Father, we just thank you right now for this gathering of your saints this morning. And as we begin, as we continue in this series of dealing with rejection, Lord, we pray that you open the hearts and minds of your people, Father, to receive your word in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, I thank you right now, Father, that you have chosen me, Father, and many other vessels that have written this work. Father, I thank you for Evangelist Charlene Allen. I thank you for uh, Brother Frank Hammond and uh, also the web version of uh, a mother far from home with the uh, references they have given me for this message. So I thank you and bless you, God. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. You know, I'm still in this series dealing with rejection. And uh, last week we talked about rejection in the womb. This week we're talking about rejection at birth and at childhood. Rejection at birth, it covers the time between labor and delivery. Wait, which verse? Jesus' parents could not find a place to deliver him as they were seeking shelter at that time. So again, turn with me to your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 1, and it reads, And it came to pass in those days that there were out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And when she brought forth, forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Uh, see, one of the people want to say, I want to tell you that Joseph and Mary came up from Nazareth because of the tax season, so they were not homeless. A lot of people want to say Jesus was born homeless. No, they had a home, but they had to be up in Bethlehem during this time period, during, uh, during this time period of the tax season. They were in Bethlehem in an environment that could not meet their needs at the time. So here we find Jesus without shelter, feeling the stresses of Mary while looking for a place of shelter. So Jesus was born in a stable miles from his home. Today you have children born in taxis, taxi cabs, buses, Malls, trains, ambulances, basements, alleys. They are born in prisons. They're born in hospitals. And the list goes on. These are all conditions in which the mother may be uncomfortable with the surrounding of the conditions and the child suffers the effects of rejection. Amen? The rejection creates wounds. It, it creates wounds that that, that uh, that's a part of the soul is your soul become wounded and these wounds look like fear of abandonment fear of commitment never being good enough it could be a fear of a, it could be a physical deformity uh, you can always be fear striving always to please others others and feelings of being a burden you know, and the spirits that accompany this sort of rejection is insecurity, distrust, unworthiness, shame, false responsibilities, an infirmity, some form of sickness attaches itself to the person. We, we have not gone through enough, through, we have not gone through anything that Jesus has not acquainted, is not acquainted with. That is why he is able to intercede on our behalf. He, he's able to set the captives free because he knows the things that we go through and the root causes of the problem. That is why it is so important. 
important for us to forgive a person because the harm they caused you may not be because of you. It may come from something so deep in their past that they don't even realize it. That is why you can't just marry anybody. <laughs> Your backgrounds may not mesh. Something, uh, the things that cause you to act one way causes them to react in a total opposite, in the total opposite, leaving them to guard themselves against you because you now look like a threat to them. <laughs> ah, something must be, it's something they must guard or protect themselves and, and you are wondering what happened. Ah, you know what happened. It wasn't you, but it was something they suffered a long time ago and you are feeling the effects of their rejection slash defense mechanism. Amen. People's perception are their reality. Amen. Childhood, we we dealing with rejection. These things happen long before our memory banks begin to take place, but we still respond to them in such a way. And then there's childhood rejection, and this covers the time from birth into your into your teenage years. Go with me to Matthew the second chapter. Matthew, the second chapter. What I love about this, this study that I'm doing is, is, is let me see that God is involved in every aspect of life. He sent his son, Jesus, who knows all about sorrow. He's acquainted with our sorrows. He knows what we go through. Verse, verse 1 says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born of the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. So here we find that Herod is threatened by the birth of Jesus. So, so some people are threatened by your birth. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's so funny that I even, I, I talked to my son this week, and he, you know, he just, my, I'm a brand new grandfather, and uh, he told me the cat ran away from home. <laughs> First of all, the cat was mad because the baby was in the house now. And he told me this week, he said, the cat just ran away. They ain't seen the cat. The cat just gone. People are affected by your birth. Amen. Verse 8, skip on down with me to verse 8. We know that King Herod was threatened by him being born and, 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 and the whole kingdom. So he told the wise man, I'm going to sum it up, he told them to go find him. In verse 8 he says, And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. You know, King Herod had no intentions of worshiping him. Amen. Let's go down to verse 11. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee to each into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. King Herod set out to kill every child that was born, male child, during that time period in Jerusalem. And so here we find a divine intervention of the angel coming to tell Joseph to flee to Egypt. But here's a path of safety. Get out of here where, where Jesus will be saved from this persecution. So here we find another uh, a threat of rejection because here we have a child being up and moved in such a way and moving out of the country, he can still feel and understand the, the disturbance of the mother. Amen? And uh, let me put a note right here. He said, when the wise men came, they opened their treasures, and they, gave, they presented unto him gifts. Did you know 
every gift that's brought to the house is not for the pastor. <laughs> yeah. Every gift that's brought to the house is for the ministry and for things to come. You hear what I said? The, the frankincense, gold, and myrrh helped Jesus them survive while they was in Egypt those three years. Amen. So it's not, it's not for you to, oh, let me go get me a new car. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I went there. I still did. You, the, the gifts for the ministry is for the work of the Lord. Not your work, it's for the work of the Lord. Amen. So now we see here in the life of Jesus, as soon as he was born, he had to flee to Egypt. We all know, know, know that Jesus was without sin. So we all know children can be cruel also. So think of the things that, that might have been said to him in his youth, you know. Joseph was a devout, so you know that everything was by the book in his house, amen. So Jesus being the oldest son of his siblings, he had no big brother or sister to turn to, but he had a prayer life, amen. Amen. He, Jesus had a prayer life. So I, I, I got a text this week that really blessed me. The other day I got a text from a person and they told me out of the kid, they told me out of all the kids that was mean to them, I was not one of them. I mean, I was, they said, it's, it's, <laughs> Tell me, I was always nice. You know, I thank God for that testimony because I need to hear that at this point in time in my life. Everybody needs to hear an encouraging word every now and again, something that's going to lift them up and that's going to keep them going. You know, another childhood rejection is when Jesus suffered was when he was misunderstood. That's another layer of rejection. His parents, when he was 12, they misunderstood Jesus. He didn't want to leave the temple yet, but yet he humbled himself to the authority in his, in his earthly father, Joseph. See, that's one thing kids don't want to do nowadays. You don't want to humble yourself to the authority that's in your life. Well, the Lord can have my back up, boo. Right now, I'm the authority in your life, and that's it. <laughs> You know, so Jesus being fully God still humbled himself to his parents. Amen. So with that being said, I will tell you, children today, you got to respect the authority in your life. Amen. Got to. Now, if you have a heart for your children, they will know that you love them. If you seek to understand and love them, they will feel the love and understanding. Major rejection will not occur accidentally or by accident, but by repeated purposeful and neglectful events. That's how children are affected by rejection. Rejection in the home does not simply mean that one parent declares that they do not love the child. Or if only there was simple, uh, if it was only that simple. But rejection takes place in many subtle forms when it is left unattended. It can wreak havoc on a child's psyche. When, when you have a child and they're constantly looking for your attention and can't get it, that sets up a form of rejection in the home. Uh, these examples are, are preferring one child over another, not being fair when extending privileges. You know, that can set up rejection. Allowing some siblings to have certain freedoms and others do not. Uh, spending too much time on the phone or online. One parent leaving and not following through with commitments. Lack of quality time. Together, you know, the most that most thing kids want to do is have fun with their parents. They want to have fun with their parents. They want to do what's pleasing to their parents. Those are the two things. So you got to nurture those two things. Making fun of a child is not, that's a form of rejection. Now, <laughs> y'all 
fix it, but I can't go in. Yes, I am. I'm going to go in. Bye, bye. I'm going to put my teeth. No, I'm not. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to put on blast. I'm going to put my own dog on blast, but I ain't going to do it. Interrupting or not letting your child speak is a form of rejection. Not showing interest in what makes your child tick. Is, is a form of rejection. What, what is it that they love to do that, that you're not interested in? Amen? Sar sarcasm. The sarcasm that they hate. You know, there's a joke, but then there's some stuff that you can really drive that will really crush their spirits. Amen? Withholding compliments and praise is a form of rejection. And never, never coming to your child's event it can always be, that's a form of rejection. There are many more forms, but I just went through 12 of them, the, the big 12. Those are the things that are most prevalent that's jumping out at me. And uh, the, uh, that author on that website, told, she identifies each and every one of them. But a person's perception is their reality. And it's the same with a child. If we define a situation as real, it becomes real and, the cons and its consequences does also. If we define this as real, then I'm going to respond in a real manner. If your child perceives that you're rejecting them, they will believe it and suffer. That, you, that is the formative age stages of a child is from the age of, I do, I want to say it's from the age of 3 to 11. They have developed all their moral guidance and bearings that they are going to be established in them for life. And if you as a parent have not established the things of God during that time period, you're in trouble. That's right. Amen. This, uh, this doesn't mean that we're to be paranoid or it means that we are not, we, we, we aren't to ignore the cries for attention when it comes to the telltale signs when the child is showing rejection. Uh, if we or our spouse have a favorite child and present and are present but absent, that, that's, that's too much work on the child and they feel rejected. They don't understand that Daddy has to work to pay bills. They need that. They don't understand that. This may mean that when a dad will have to make a special time and, and pay attention, though he is tired, to make sure his children feel loved and attended to. Being, a busy, being busy is no excuse to not spend time with your children. And I'm going to put this in here. This is a hard choice for many moms and dads, uh, and, and single moms and single dads. To put food on the table, roof over the head, or to go to a program sponsored by the child. Well, I'm here to tell you that you need to make some time to attend those programs. I've heard grown men, I'm talking about men in their 50s, uh, and, and older talk about their fathers never attended a baseball game, never went to a softball game, or come, come to see them play basketball, uh, never went to the child's dance or, or went to the program at school. These are adults that's dealing with, still dealing with wounds of rejection that happened years ago. Remember I was talking about those wounds and what came along with it? If a child perceives himself rejected by his family, then he will inevitably have less self-worth. Those wounds that accompany childhood rejection are acceptance issues. They have deal with self-rejection, low self-esteem, trusting others, relationship issues, love-based performance. And the spirit that attach itself to the childhood rejection is shyness. Intolerance, self-promotion, perverseness, escape, and frustration. Uh, now the sad part about all of this is we all, with, <laughs> is all of these spirits are operating in the church today. Amen. I just mentioned some things that, forms of rejection that the church people that are grown and in 
church, I just told you, men in their 50s are still dealing with these forms of rejection. And I'm pretty sure there's some women too. You, you hear the fact that I didn't have a father. That's a form of rejection and there's, they're wounded by that. And so with these wounds that come with that rejection, shyness, intolerance, self-promotion, perverseness, frustration, all of these things carry on in life and they continue to operate in them, coming to the church, receiving Christ, and never getting delivered from the root cause of the problem. So many of these spirits gain strength in college. The person was away from everyone that knew them. That is why you have so many people in church that are, are holy and sanctified that are run off for the weekend. Yeah, they go off for the weekend and go to the Essence Festival and go to the cruise and go these different, the Vegas and think it's what happens in Vegas, stays in Vegas. And they'll go out and entertain the wounds that they are feeling from that childhood rejection and come back to the church like they ain't did nothing. Amen. I didn't include men in this running off on the weekend thing because a lot of men just don't go to church. They just say, forget it. Yeah. Because of the examples that the people that do go to church are setting for. Amen. Why am I going to church? You're doing the same thing I'm doing. Amen. Amen. They do that. People are doing the same thing in the church as the people that don't come to church. I, I take my hat off to the brothers because they have a respect for not playing with God. Amen. Uh, oh my goodness. Amen. We cannot continue to operate this way as the body of Christ. Amen. We cannot. Ephesians 5 says this in verse 3, but fornication and uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once, not let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Yes. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather of giving thanks. Yes. For ye, for this ye know that a whoremonger, mm -hmm. nor unclean person, nor covetous who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Amen. You don't have an inheritance unless you get delivered. Amen. 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 We, don't want to, we don't want to admit that, but that's true. God knows why you do what you do, but there is deliverance in the house. He's waiting for us to give those wounds over to him so that he may touch our lives and set us free. Amen. Amen. Verse 6, it says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. There is nothing waiting for you at the end but the wrath of God. Amen. Word. I, I ain't got nothing but your word. That's all I got. And I have to apologize to about the, for these pastors out here because they, we're going to have to, as pastors, we got to do a better job in teaching and holding the body of Christ accountable for the sins that are rampant in the congregation. Man. We have to quit looking at the bottom line and start looking at the heart line. Man. Our job was God gave us, sent us out to witness, to be for the great commission, to help the lost, to bring them and point them to Christ, to give them the words of instructions till they come into the fullness, the fullness, even the fullness of Christ and knowledge that they're knowing good and evil. Yes, yes. But we're so busy focused on the bottom line that I can't tell you about your sins because you might leave. And then you might tell your cousin and your sister and the whole family, which make up about 28 tithers of all, and I lose all that money in one plot because I told Big Mama she was sinning. Amen. Well, I tell you what, Big Mama, you in sin. If you in sin, you in sin, and you need to stop Amen. and come get delivered. Amen. Amen. It's, ain't, no, ain't no dollar 
worth me not telling you what thus saith the Lord. Amen. John 18, uh, John 8 and 23 says this, and he said unto them, you are beneath, you are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of, of this world. Verse 24, and I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. You've got to not only believe Jesus Amen. is who he is, but you've got to follow him. Take up your cross and follow him. Amen. Amen. And as I come, I'm going to give you one more verse here as I come to a close. I'm going to give you one more. It's John 18, 36. Well, maybe two more. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not, he was talking to Pontius Pilate. He was on trial. He was in the courtroom. And he said, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of the world, of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, art thou king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. Amen. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of truth heareth my voice. Amen. Do you hear the voice of the Lord today? Amen. Do you hear what the voice of the Lord is saying? He is talking about the wounds of rejection that we suffered in the childhood that never, we never dealt with the root cause of the problem. Amen. He wants us in church today to deal with it, quit hiding behind them, and instead get delivered by turning it over to him. Amen. Jesus was at all points tempted. He knows, he knows us in the fellowship of our suffering. We should know him in that fellowship. In order for him to you recognize him that he knows you and knows all about the problems you suffered, you got to give it to him. Amen. Amen. Uh, he said, you have to remember when Jesus came into the temple. When he came into the temple. He came into the temple in Luke, the fourth chapter. And he opened the Bible and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to the heal the brokenhearted. Yes. To preach deliverance to the captives. Yes. And recovering sight to the blind. Yes. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Yes. He came, he came, he came to set us free. Yes. He came, he came to deliver the poor. He came to help the brokenhearted. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And so I tell you this morning, deliverance is here in the house. It's here in the house. And it's here for those who are suffering from those wounds of rejection. The wounds that have have not only injured your soul but have caused you relationships because you was intolerant. Yes, yes. Made you miss the gift of God because you played shy. Put you in a place where you weren't supposed to be because you promoted yourself. Amen. We have a lot of people walking around here with titles. In the church, there are bishops and apostles, and I'm this, that, and the other, and I'm that, and this. Just be you. Amen. Just be you. You, you don't want the responsibility that come with the title you just promoted yourself to. Many are hiding their perverse ways. They escape and run off and do what they do and come back to the church. Thinking the Lord, 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 Lord will forgive me. Yeah, he'll forgive you. If you go and sin no more. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray?
pray. Father, I just thank you right now for what you have done. 